Hey guys, what is going on? Today I wanted to make a video talking about the deflect meta, which happens to be the classic Rex Chan style playstyle right now. And I wanted to talk about why it's good, what are the counters to it, and whether it's overpowered or not. So I wanna start with kind of building out what a standard deflect meta army looks like. We're gonna go with the more mainstream ones compared to the variations and special changes you can make to it. It's really just a style of combat that can be adapted to many different sub-styles of play. So here we have the shield box, a musk ox and a shield bug, which is a very spammy melee unit which has decent damage, enough damage that if it can close in on the enemy ranged units, it will chew through them pretty quickly. So it's not just a move unit that you can ignore. It's very tanky defensively. Health is not amazing, but it's solid enough that with this high defense, it's very tanky. And of course, it's got the herding, which is very efficient for adding more tankiness. We've got immunity, which is very useful on tanks because you're not going to be completely melted by poison. Poison tends to be a very good tank killer because it does percent of HP damage in your defense, I believe. And of course, deflection armor. You know, that's what this meta is all about. It's the deflect strategy. And that's basically all that lets you do is close the distance on enemy ranged units without just getting picked off. Just extra tankiness against the primary damage source melee units are concerned about, which is range damage. So let's rock with that. And of course, horns is good for killing enemy high defense tanks as well. So they're not just losing melee matchups very hard against high damage melee, they're actually able to trade pretty effectively. Then these are usually paired up with some sort of glassy mass ranged. That can be chameleon. The the regeneration being very good against enemy artillery. They can do a couple hits, then if their health gets slow they can back up. Or it could be a porcupine, which is really good at killing melee, which tends to have higher defense. This would help you kill the enemy melee and get your own melee into the enemy backline quicker. Right. In this case, because the ox already has horns, let's go with the chameleon here. And this regeneration is very useful, especially if the enemy has long range artillery that they're trying to harass you with. You can kind of pop in with your range units. Get some damage, back up, heal up. For our level 3 artillery, I'm just gonna go with this one here. Which is the caterpillar, because of its insane range compared to chimp or archerfish is pretty strong in the artillery meta because range is honestly more important than damage especially at this stage of the game when an archer fish or a chimp would only barely be outranging soundbeam towers but this very comfortably outranges soundbeam towers so soundbeam towers in fact be very good against this type of deflect melee and with low damage and pretty good against glassy mass ranged, especially if uh, sonic booms are in play. These basically make towers a non-issue with their sight rate, radius and their range. They can clear out all your the enemy towers before you even go in with your melee and ranged. These are cheap enough. That you can mass a ton of them especially with their 
pretty high range, chameleon being one of the highest ranged ranged creatures. You can just mass up a ton of these and use that to pick off the enemy melee units because these deflect melee are weak to just regular high power melee, especially with horns. They will crumple pretty fast. But the fact that these units are also cheap means you can mass up a lot of these ranged units in the back and while these take the punishment from the enemy melee, these can pick them off. Having perforate here would make that even more efficient. You want to make that variation to your army, but having both horns and perforate does kind of lead to a little bit of overinvestment, especially if your enemy ends up going with like high HP, low defense. Let's look at level 2, so we can kind of work backwards and apply the same kind of combat style. This is a pretty solid level 2 deflect melee, great shield, very tanky for level 2, extremely so, but it is a bit expensive. You want your deflect melee to be pretty spammy. And th this is on like the higher end of what a level 2, maybe mid, mid high end of what a level 2 melee would cost. So perhaps there's something else. Charge attack of course is great on melee as a gap closer. We could use this. It still has charge attack. Go with the wombat head there because I think it's worth it for the little bit of extra damage and a lot of extra tankiness. This is pretty solid. It's spammy enough, you can get a lot of numbers going. And charge attack is gonna just allow you to not waste any time walking up to the enemy, getting, taking damage for free. So we'll go with that. And then we'll go with high kneel as the ranged unit here. Tenniel being one of the strongest level 2 range units, 8 damage pack under an 18 range. This is going to outclass pretty much any other ranged unit that you're going to encounter. It's really only going to lose to artillery and sonic or getting overrun by enemy melee, deflect melee especially if it gets surrounded because it is pretty glassy. The, the health is not bad but the defense is very low. And it's not too expensive. It's right in that mid, mid high cost. But it has these cheap melee protecting it, serving as a front line. So, with this comp, you're gonna be able to go level through pretty fast. And let's look at level four. We're just gonna go with the same theme here keep rocking the deflect. Elephant is an option here. You can use Oog Peaster to save some money on the immunity, but poison is very powerful, so having the immunity is useful. This is an option, but it's very expensive in terms of a lack, and it's quite slow. So let's look at what else we can do. There is this for a little bit of amphibiousness as well. Not as expensive because it doesn't have the horns. I think at level four, horn melee is good, but it's not really necessary. Just having a ton of damage can do the trick as well. And immunity is pretty good because you're gonna be going against a lot of Komodos, things like that. Rhino is solid as well because it has a bit higher speed. You definitely want the sight radius upgrade on this ASAP because they can't charge at anything they can't see. But again, quite expensive. It depends at this point if you're trying to run it down at level 3, level 4, or you're trying to go level 5. 
with this army usually your level 3 is kind of your gonna be your big attack you just wanna go level 3 ASAP get your resource upgrades and then clear out any enemy towers with your caterpillars and then just overrun the enemy with their shield box and your mass rage and it's gonna be very hard to survive that if executed properly This one has a lot more speed, which is cool. I do like that. This could honestly even work without the charge attack because of the 25 speed. I like this actually. That's a lot of damage here. It's going to be hitting like a truck. It does not have immunity, which is a bit of a problem. I wonder, since we don't need charge attack, maybe there's something else we can use for immunity. This could work. Very good speed on land and in the water. A bit, a bit less damage here. Maybe a croc. I feel like this used to be level, some variation of this used to be level 4 for sure, I remember using these a long time ago. Leap attack instead of charge. Uh, 20 damage. Decent stats all the way around. This has 20 damage as well, and frenzy, which is kind of cool these kind of units because once they get into melee range you can pop the frenzy and this is just gonna be level five these are all really good and usable units it depends on what kind of range unit you're going with so a very powerful and common option is the Hippo Chameleon. And if you get enough of these it can be quite the death ball because they have massive range. Having high range on range creatures means you can have more of a firing arc or more of a radius around the creature where it can dispel its damage and it has an easier time getting into a firing position so it doesn't have to go around and or get closer to the enemy before it can start firing. So it's quite effective at forming a death ball like that. And with the regen and hurting, these things are pretty much unkillable. If they do take damage from enemy artillery, they can back off, heal up, go back in, or back off, let your melee go in, engage the artillery, and then send these back in. Grab it from the zoo here. So let's rock that because we're going with chameleons at level 3 as well, so continuing the theme. And since we're going to amphib here, let's make our melee amphib as well and let's let's grab immunity and horns. Since we're going with chameleon, we will go with horns for our melee. If we don't want the immunity, we can use a ram or a pima. Maybe a warthog. But since we do want that immunity, 
That's interesting. Maybe a walrus. This is pretty decent. It has high damage. It's very slow on land, which is an issue. Since the main deflect creature here, the shield bug that has immunity is land based, it's a bit more difficult to find amphibious combos that have every single ability we want. Uh, Narwhal can be an option, it's still gonna have low land speed, but it has camouflage, which it can use to close gap. And actually, since this army is probably going to be used mostly on like mostly land maps, let's just go with a pure land melee. And the hippo chameleons having that amphibiousness can just be an extra factor to harass from the water. And those things are pretty good on their own. They don't necessarily need a front line because of how tanky they are. So we can rock this. It has good speed. It's cheap. So we're actually going to be able to go level 5. And it's okay damage, not amazing. But it's going to be backed up by the range, which is the key. These units are going to work together. They're both pretty cheap here too. Let's move on to level 5 here. Poison, very strong at level 5. It's gonna pretty much win you the melee matchup uh, if the enemy doesn't have artillery or poison or immunity of their own. Hercules Beetle is another option for deflection armor, especially at the latest levels because it has very good defense, even better than the shield bug. Barrier destroy is alright too, but it's really more effective. At least for my playstyle, it's more effective at the lower levels when you're kind of hitting enemy expos that don't have many creatures and you're able to get quick damage on the buildings. Continue the theme of spammy deflect melee. Maybe grab a woolly mammoth with a shield bug. Just gonna give you a good matchup against poison melee from the enemy or any other kind of poison applicators. Maybe a colossal squid. It's not gonna have the horns, but we'll have regeneration, which is powerful. Again, slow speed here, but it's very, very tanky. So once you're ready to commit to your attack, you can just walk these in. And though they're going to soak up so much damage, and once they get into melee range, they will do quite a bit of damage as well. Giving them Stink Cloud can be cool as well. Especially since we're working with most likely a, a land map here, and we don't necessarily need the water speed. And the Sting Cloud can just slow everything down for the enemy creatures and give your ranged move units a chance to move in and start doing big damage. This could be one way to approach it. Or we can continue with the Horns theme. Then go with the White Mammoth. A bit faster. Defense is okay, health is pretty good, and it is pretty low for level 5. But because it has a good air horns, it will match up pretty well against a lot of tanky level 5 units that have poison. So 
And with Frenzy too, it's pretty cool, especially once you close the gap on enemy ranged units, you can just pop Frenzy and do a lot of damage really quickly. Stink Cloud pairs pretty well with Frenzy as well, because you can use the Stink Cloud to hold the enemy units in place, stop them from running away while you pound on them with the extra DPS. Solid choice there, and we can continue the pattern again with raise units with regeneration, maybe a giant squid, and some like high defense, maybe a Rodello. Flight team basically maxed out defense, and we'll be just about maxed out with the defense upgrade. High health. Okay, speed, something like a musk ox could give us more speed. Similar health. And defense with hurting a defense upgrade, it's gonna be hit and cap. The costs are melee is pretty cheap in terms of pull. And it's more expendable, spammy, kind of acting like a shield. While this is what you want to mass up, and this is going to act as your death ball that's going to be able to push through and start taking down the enemy bases. These are the ones you want to protect, pull back when they're low in health, heal up with regeneration. These are more expendable, you're sending them to die, serve as big shields, and letting these progress and make make ground into the enemy base and these two range units are amphibious so if there's any water geysers or anything you can contest them especially once you get later into the game and it's kind of okay to not have any amphibious at level two or three on a lot of maps like glacier or thin ice yeah, because you can just focus all your efforts on the land push and if your enemy does opt to go for the amphibious route, they're going to be spending resources on that and you can kind of get an advantage on land. And then once you go later in the game, you can start contesting those water points. Another option for if you really do want to contest water earlier on is to take out one of these level fives and put in the flyer instead of level two or level three flyer uh, especially with barrier destroy it can be super easy to snipe out generators and just even if you're not going to fully contest the water points you can at least make it much harder for your enemy to hold on to them but for this, let's just go with a straight combat build and this is pretty much going to be extremely solid. So that is an example of Deflect Meta Army. If there's many variations to this, you can take the horns off of your melee and throw Perforate on your ranged instead. And that's another way to just deal with high defense, make your melee even more spammier. But it does work well with the melee here as well. They're just different, different approaches that are, that are going to be slightly different variations of the same core play style. And which it, with it being the idea that your melee unit's job is to take damage and your ranged unit's job, job is to do damage. Hence, deflection armor being the primary ability we're rocking here, because it's going to help you tank more and going to help the melee do their job better. And this is kind of a specialization of use case philosophy here, where you're giving each creature the abilities and the stats that are going to help them do their specific job the best. The pack hunter on the ranged, the herding, deflection armor on melee, it all kind of synergizes that together they're going to be a really powerful 
composition that's going to be able to take out pretty much any less specialized units in stray combat. Okay, so let's save this army. Deflect meta. And now I want to talk about counters. The spammy deflect melee is really weak to horns and super high damage. Something like a Gorilla Ram, which JJ has been using a lot lately. Just gonna be pretty much max power level 3. Yeah, with 22 damage, you know, upgraded it's gonna hit with 27, something like that. And the charge attack. Okay bulk, actually pretty comparable to the shield box. This is gonna absolutely wreck the shield box if it in straight up melee combat. But it is it's also gonna get wrecked by the mass range that's gonna be behind the shield box. So really if if you can play well with artillery and take out the mass range, then these will absolutely farm them. The thing about the deflect army is each of the units by themselves are not very strong. They need to be working together to achieve anything. Like the, this will lose to other melee units. This will likely use to lose to other range units, especially tankier ones, because this is very glassy and just pure damage. So they really have to work together. And that brings us to whether this str strategy is overpowered because because of the nature of how much micro and planning and army composition carefulness this requires. It's not the kind of army where you can just pump out the same unit and just A move and it's going to work out. No, you're going to have to, each force on the field is going to have need to have a good uh, what's the word? A good differential, a good uh, set of units. Like you're gonna need some melee, some range, maybe some artillery, and each little group of units you have on the field compared to some other like mono battle type units that you can just mass up a lot of the same kind of unit and just send them all in as an A move and they'll do okay against whatever they come across. And the Hippo Chameleon is kind of like that. Like that's a unit that can really, except for artillery, it can fight just about anything. And even artillery can do okay against if you can, you know, just walk them into range of the artillery and start focus firing, you know, into melee range. That's not going to be the case with something like this. It's way too squishy. They're gonna all get picked off trying to walk into melee range. So they're really gonna need their front line. And that's kind of what makes the strategy not OP in my opinion. But it is strong. That, that There's a difference between something being overpowered and something being strong. This is very much one of the strongest straight combat strategies and that's why this is kind of the classic Rex playstyle at the moment because when it comes to straight combat head-on fights not much is going to be able to defeat this but that's the whole thing about this game there's different play styles and you don't have to fight in straight combat you can harass people with flyers you can use all kinds of things to disrupt your enemy's economy e-burst flyers Defile land flyers, a bear and destroy, a building sniping. There is lots of different ways to do it. Hovering, artillery, there's all kinds of ways. And if your enemy is using this kind of strategy, that means they're not likely going to have many tools to deal with something like that. Like they're gonna, not going to have hovering or flyers or ways to stop some of those different approaches. Or even like a ganglion approach of attacking from different points from the water and stuff like that. So if you can maybe set up a lot of backward sound beams, you don't want them too far up because these things are going to take them out. You can set up 
sound beams in the back, a lot of melee units of your own, and some artillery, then and you can just cover your front line enough that these this comp is not able to break through, and then you can attack from the sides or the water and kind of break down the Rex player that way. So I don't believe this is overpowered, no, but it is very strong, and this is kind of the this is the culmination of what the Rex strategy is. So this is definitely strong. But it does require good execution, like just about anything. And I think as long as the skill input required to make it work is at par with the power of the strategy, I think it's not overpowered, which I believe is the case here. Honestly, the thing that I think is most overpowered is the Caterpillar. I think being able to make Soundbeam powers a non-issue at level 3 with such a cheap unit I think is a bit busted. Perhaps this should be lower damage because, I mean it is size 6 so this is okay. Maybe a bit of a damage nerf so it's kind of a little bit closer to what an Archerfish would be. But I don't know, it's it's not so overpowered that it immediately needs to be nerfed, but something to look at. Maybe a bit of a range nerf, if anything. Just to make it more susceptible, so enemy melee can actually have some kind of a hope to get in and disable them. But regardless, it's it's nothing too broken, It's a, it's all within the realm of decent game balance right here. Since generators are such an important factor in Tellurian with the high uh, conversion coefficient, being able to convert 80% of electricity into coal, having a flyer to control water geysers can be pretty good. Um, if I have something here, no. and the standard classic unit just be the scorp bag and fly fast bear destroy cheap available at level 2 or you can make it level 3 with the poison sting which makes it pretty good late game against enemy melee as well as poison scales pretty well and I think level 3 is okay because you're not really going to be worrying about that kind of stuff level 2. And it's going to be a waste of resources to be setting up air chambers and all of that stuff. And we're going to rock that and then the level 5 is going to have to change a little bit because now we're only using one unit instead of two. And you pretty much want to have a melee unit with this kind of comp but it depends like if the enemy has sonic your melee is going to get you in trouble if the thing about only having one level 5 is there's no creature that's going to perfectly cover everything you're going to have to make a decision and this army really has so much at level 3 that you you should be able to get an economic advantage by then. Level five is just kind of a late game finisher, like just to finish off the enemy, assuming you already have an economic advantage by then. If not, you're probably gonna lose. Immune horns can be pretty powerful. Dealing with poison. But it's gonna lose hard to mass ranged.
something like this very powerful tank again this would work well in conjunction with other high damage range units or something of the sort a uh, tanky range unit like this can be good as the only level 5 because these really don't have to die at all if they get low you can back them up and they have good range to have a very powerful firing arc take definitely be able to take care of enemy melee and you do have these level 4 melee to kind of engage enemy artillery if that's what they choose to bring at level 5 but it's not very that, really that common especially if they're only bringing one level 5 if they have two level 5s and they're at economic parity with you by the time you get to level 5 you're probably gonna lose the game with this strategy because all of the power is going into the level 3 here that's really where you want to make your big move and get an advantage Based on that, we can kind of make the decision to not go with a too powerful level 5 and just go for something that's... You're assuming you're, how you have an economic advantage and you're just using your level 5 as a finisher. So some kind of overpop creature can be cool there. Behemoth. Some speed on there. Gets digging on there as well. Pretty cool. Gap close. But it doesn't really matter. It's really all going to be about your level 3 here. And a little bit of level 4 combat to seal the deal. And then just finish it off with whatever you like using. with Giant spiders as well, but something else. Poison and regeneration, pretty good. Not amazingly tanky, but regeneration is solid. Could be a blue whale too, just for more pure damage. Expensive, but fun.
cheaper spammy level 5 can be good here because as we said the whole idea is to get an economic advantage at level 3 and 4 and then you're likely hitting level 5 before your opponent and then just pumping out cheap level 5s and just running it down finishing the game off so that's another way to do that let's just rock with that for now Hovering can be pretty good for attacking from unexpected angles, getting a flank. And these units are pretty strong. Level 4 range that can be that can serve as a game finisher. So we're gonna rock that. I think I've just about covered everything I need to. main thing I really wanted to discuss here was just the fact of why the deflect meta is good and how it works and it's all about specializing the unit for its task the melee unit with deflect being extra tanky against the primary damage source it's concerned about that's really all it is this you have a shield and you have a sword and they're each doing their own job this it does damage that's all it does that's all it's about and this tanks and it does just enough damage that you cannot ignore it that's the key that's the difference between this and some kind of pure meat strategy like what randy silver wolf uses Let's take a look at that really quick you can see him using something like I don't even know. Yeah, I think this is what he uses. I think his have poison touch, maybe. And the level two. Is it like this? No. Oh, I think no. Yes, there we go. This is another pure meat melee that is gonna do a good job of tanking damage but it has so low damage of its own that you can just ignore it and focus fire the range units that are behind it and so it's not really doing its job as a shield it's not shielding your melee units because it's getting ignored so it's it can it's more just gonna gum up the choke points and stop the enemy from advancing and it's very good at wasting time not let your enemy advance and attack you but it, it's not a rex chance style unit rex uses his shields to just more of an offensive purpose and help him push down through the battle not kind of just to stop the battle from occurring this works it works well it's supposed to work well that is the whole point of the deflection armor ability and I hope you all can take this knowledge and use it whether you're a Rex style player or not you can definitely include some Rex tactics into your army wherever you need a strong combat presence or you can think of ways to counter a Rex style and I hope this knowledge is gonna help you all and let me know what you think of the video. See you all next time. Peace.